try and ease off that a little bit today. I was getting a little bit giddy. I thought the only way you were ever giddy, Cole, was when you stood on your wallet. Oh, no, that's vertigo, sorry. <laughs> Different thing. <laughs> it's a bit early for this, Phil. So this is not a bad layout. One ball passes to Brown seven. Just a quick glance at the table. You feel like the problem may come for Ivan from this blue, uh, the pink four, sorry, to the purple five. That's going to be the key shot in this rack. Now, if the five passes the six into that top right pocket, it's not even looked. But that wouldn't be the worst route. Hmm. Not sure how much arena table experience Ivan has got. But these are the type of shots where when you're not used to this table under the lights, it can easily get away from you. You've got to play this with soft hands. It's very easy to overrun this. And he's going near the side pocket. Well, he's had a result there. I don't believe he was playing for that little window. But that has worked out just fine. So far, so good in this rack. Just needs to make sure he pots this ball. Should be okay. He's pretty close to the six. Doesn't have to get adventurous with the cue ball. One thing we can say, Carl, without any fear or favour, is that Spanish pool has never been in a better place. Leaving it too late to remove the template. <laughs> Can't imagine much later, can you? A couple of balls to be potted. Yeah, in practice, you would just leave it there and just shoot the nine. But something about when you're in a match, your mind does, does wander and you start to think, oh, if I leave the template there, I'll probably miss this nine. Some players move the template themselves. It's kind of each to their own, but... Don't blame him for asking the ref. So, this nine ball for a break and run. Yeah, very good from Perez. Setting out his stall immediately. He leads Tony Drago 1-0. Now, don't forget over on table two, you can watch all of the action today on the Matchroom Pool YouTube channel. Over there, it is Veronica Ivanovskaya from Germany up against... Tiberiu Iorgulescu from Romania. Now, I've been avoiding saying those two names all morning, but eventually I had to, to grasp the nettle. It wasn't too bad an effort, was it? Veronica Ivanovskaya is easy enough. I've commentated on her matches before, but Tiberiu Iorgulescu, now that was a, a bit of a mouthful, I have to say. Well, I want to stood a chance at that, Phil. You've passed with flying colours. But I think now is the time for your little trivia question. Well, as I said before, no trivia questions are little. They're all great. Tiberiu, who is playing Veronica, he has won a silver medal in what competition? A silver medal, did you say? Yes, in a particular competition. It's not a pool competition, that's a small clue. Well, it certainly isn't a little one, that. I can tell you, I've got no idea, I've got no idea. That's an immense one, Carl. Well, we'll give you a few racks, then. 
I was going to say World Games. Of course, you can win medals in that, as we saw recently in Birmingham, Alabama. But obviously, that's that's not the answer. You obviously know the answer, Carl. I'm afraid I do, Phil. I'm afraid I do. If I'm silent over the next few racks, it's because I'm mulling this over. Look at Tony Drago here, though. He can run a rack in less than a minute. He does it on a regular basis. And we're seeing the great man at his best here. 56 years of age, no slowing down. Just brilliant from Drago. Doesn't he make the game look so easy when he's playing at his best? Yeah, he just likes to get on with it, doesn't he? He doesn't like to overthink. I think if he, he does overthink things, it makes him not play as good. Plays on pure instinct. It's going to be interesting to see his break shot, though, because I think that was always his weakness over the years. And, you know, when the one, one ball was on the spot and the wing ball was guaranteed. The break was easy, so this isn't going to be easy, so this is going to be the big thing for Tony. Just talking about his quickness, and I think this is a good frame of reference, he still holds the record for the quickest ever frame of snooker on the Pro Tour. Three minutes, 1988. He was playing a, a, an Englishman called Danny Fowler to win a, a frame of snooker in three minutes. Basically, Fowler broke off and Drago made a 70-plus break and Fowler conceded, and on they went with the next. Well, he's the only player that's breaking with his hand on the rail, but that's actually worked out okay. He's potted the one. That's what the players are trying, so... That's actually a good sign. Trouble is, Cole, you've got me at it now. I can't concentrate on thinking about that trivia question. Your Golescu. I'm trying to... Gain some kind of clue from his build. Well, he looks a, a fit individual. Mind you, everyone's fit compared with me, but... <laughs> well, I was going to tell you soon, but I might just leave it till near the end of the match then. Oh, no, you can't do that. I'm going to say silver medal at... Thinking about Romania's sporting... Expertise. Would it be rowing, wrestling, something like that? I'm afraid that is the wrong answer, Phil. You've let the country down. Go on. He won a silver medal at the International Olympics of Maths. I can't believe you didn't know that. Well, you got my number there, Carl. I thought that was just basic knowledge on the pool circuit. I thought everyone knew that. A silver medal in the World Championship of Maths. That's very impressive. So what do you get if you win it as gold-plated equation? Yeah, it is impressive. I'm sure we'll flick over to table two at some point and give you a little nosy of what's going on. That's if you're not watching it on Matchroom Pool YouTube channel. Drago's kicked at the two. It's not turned out too bad. Ivan may have a safety shot. One final thing about that World Championship of Maths. I've got the perfect sponsor for it. A pie company. <laughs> this is far too early. <laughs> oh. 
Well, I've had more fun with you in three racks, Cole, than I did all day yesterday with JJ. He's too serious thinking about that American <laughs> Moscow decap challenge. Yeah, it's going to be fun and games on day two. What a match to start off with. The legend of Q Sports, Tony Drago. It was a good kick shot. He wasn't quite sure where the two was going to end up, but the main purpose of that shot for Tony was to keep that cue ball up in that corner and just leave distance. And this is what we have said about this break shot. It's the fact that the balls are going to come out a little bit more funky, and this is what we're going to see. We're going to see a few safety exchanges. And this is what the game's about, this sort of kicking things, giving yourself the best opportunity to get away with stuff. And the beauty of nine ball pool, Phil, obviously you commentate on a, a ton of snooker. Safety at nine ball doesn't last that long. You know, two, three, four shots, someone's got ball in hand and then you can go game. So even though you might see a bit more safety, it's still not boring, is it? It's still very quick. And it's highly skilled. I was talking to Joe Perry and Gary Wilson at the recent Championship League snooker that Matchroom so ably organised. Luca Brassel from Belgium ended up winning it in Leicester. Finished just over a, a week or so ago. And both Joe Perry and Gary were saying how impressed they were with the level of safety play in nine ball pool. Of course, Gary Wilson played in the UK Open. Joe Perry came down didn't he, to the to the World Cup at Brentwood. And they were both saying that's something that snooker players who don't play pool don't really appreciate, just how tactically aware pool players are. And, of course, right at the top of the, the list would be the Filipinos. Yeah, and I think over the years, when, you, when we're talking about playing on a traditional pool table with a bigger pocket, the safety game it kind of loses a bit of strength. But obviously, Matchroom are vying for the four-inch pocket that will come on all the tour events soon. And the safety game then, it goes up a notch. And Drago is such a good potter, it would not bother him in the slightest if the dimensions of the pockets were were shrunk even more. The tornado is blowing after losing the opening rack. Tony leads by two racks to one. And you can see over on table two, the first rack of that match is not over yet. It's about to be, though. Veronica Ivanovskaya should pop this nine ball against the maths genius, Tiberiu Yorgulescu. In it goes. So that's an, an easy sum to work out. 1-0. Even I could manage that one, Phil. You know, everyone associates Tony Drago with his exploits in snooker, and that's quite unfair, actually, because he's done so much in nine-ball pool. He won the World Masters in 2003. And he was a member of two Moscone Cup teams for Europe in 2007 and 2008. And in the, the first year, he was the most valuable player. Also won the French Open and the International Ten Ball Championship in 2008, so he's had plenty of success. Ivan's in a world of trouble. It was a good safety shot. He could probably get the jump cue out and just hit the right hand side of the one. That would guarantee the hit. Kicking at this ball, the only way he's going to hit it is two rails. The top right and side long rail. But often in these situations, you're just trying to think. 
what good things can happen. Two rails. Things can happen because of where the six, the eight, and the pink four is. You alluded just earlier on, Phil, about the safety, the play of the Filipinos. The Filipinos would kick this two rails and try and hit that right-hand side of the one ball. Ivan doesn't feel he's up to the job. He wants to guarantee the hit. It's out for debate whether on paper this is the right shot or the wrong shot. If you don't fancy the two rail kick, well, maybe you should jump. So that's what he's decided to do. But he's missed the jump shot. It was a good safety from Tony. And now he's got ball in hand. Yeah, when the rack is just covering the nine ball, I think the players are well equipped to take that off. I think if the nine ball is actually on the rack or there's other balls very close, then it could be a bit scary. I believe Tony's living back in Malta, Phil, right? Yeah, he is indeed. One of that gorgeous island's most famous sportsman, if not the most. There's nothing changed with his technique whatsoever. It's aim, point, deliver. Yeah, the good thing with his technique, even at the ripe old age of 56, plays on instinct, is a natural cueist. So even as he's clocking up the years, he's still going to be dangerous. It's going to be interesting to see how Tony gets on in this event because he, if he does go on to qualify for the last 64, Phil, he'll be one of them players that you'd like to avoid. He can be a little bit scary. Absolutely. Now, let me give you a few scores from around this massive 24-table arena. Mika Immonen, former world champion from Finland. He's fallen up on Dimitris. Now, Vico... Jonas Suto Camino from Spain. Promising young talent. He's 3-0 up on Klaus Dieter Klein. And talking of youngsters, Riku Rompainen, who we saw at the UK Open. Still a schoolboy. He's quickly 2-0 up on James Telfer from GB. No shot on the one ball, so a push out will be played. He can play the kick if he wishes, but you would only really kick at this ball if you, you feel you're guaranteed a safety. If you are tuning in for the very first time to nine ball pool, after the break shot, the very next shot, either player whose shot it is can play what we call a push out. So that's why you've seen Tony just hit the two. Bit of a strange push out, to be fair. But maybe he could get away with it when he's not playing one of the, the top boys. Yeah, so now Ivan can either play the shot on the one ball or he can pass it back to Tony. But you can see he's getting down straight away. I think he's going to try and pot the two with a billiard. Cue ball off the yellow one into the two. Or just play the bank, Phil. What do I know? I thought the pink four was in the way. Just doing some research on Perez this morning. It's quite clear he plays some three cushion billiards, some carom. And so that might assist when it comes to working out the angles. Well, maybe Tony didn't know that. Maybe, maybe Tony should have done some research leaving a bank shot like that. Years ago, we had the, the World Masters snooker. 
which was a wonderful festival over two days in Birmingham, England. Actually, Tony Drago got to the final of that, losing out to Jimmy White. That was in the men's singles. But Barry Hearn, who was promoting, quite rightly wanted as deep an international involvement as possible, and he invited players from all over the place. And we had one carom expert, I believe he was from Austria, and he found difficulty potting balls because snooker wasn't his game. But his ability to lay snookers and to get out of them was otherworldly. That shot wasn't, though. The, the five ball has been hung. Cue ball needs to slow down. I think he's just okay. But this is the other thing. When you play a fast player like Tony, Joshua Filler, even Jason Shaw, they can reel racks off very quickly and you know before you know it you've lost two or three racks and then everything seems a little bit scary from then on in but tony's looking like the good old tony drago at the pool table yeah when the fireball was missed you knew what was going to happen We've now had five racks, and Tornado Tony Drago has won four of them. He's looking good, and it's great to see. Scores from around this arena, Tyler Steyer, U.S. Moscone Cup candidate. He's two on up on Daniel Sturtz. Shane Walford, another U.S. Moscone Cup candidate. He's three one up on Mika Van Berkel. Now, the winner of our match, Drago against Perez will take on either Sanyan Perlovanovic or Alan Brown. Right now, Perlovanovic is leading 2-0. Loho Sum, fine player from Hong Kong. He's 2-1 up on Simon Ayres. And Patrick Mountain from here in Germany leads 2-0 as well. One final one, Oliver Sholnocki, 3-0 up on Stefan Selberg from Finland. Just seen the referee have a word with Tony there. I'm, I'm not so sure what he was saying. I don't believe it was a soft break warning, but who knows? Now, talking about that, I got something clarified this morning. I was commentating with Jeremy Jones yesterday on the Robert Hart match against Maximilian Lechner, and we were wondering whether Hart had been warned about a softer break than is permissible. Well, he was apparently. His second break wasn't deemed to be forceful enough, and he was warned by Marcel Eckhart. Oh, Tony will not like that one. Playing with lots of side to come round for the red three ball. But even so, Carl, with his abilities, that was a bad miss. Yeah, it's going to be a good talking point, Phil, this, you know, what is a soft break? How do you deem what a soft break is? But, you know, these pool players who play lots of pool, we, we kind of know there's like a bit of a... It's an unwritten rule. And the reason why we don't want the soft break in the game is because you can control the cue ball a little easier and the balls, and it, just be, it can become a little bit boring. And I think over yesterday's play and just five racks now, you can see it is a lot better when the players breaking that little harder the balls are not quite coming out as good and you get to see a bit more pool like now you know Perez has he's got work to do in this rack and this is where the the top players are going to thrive and well they're not so good and not yeah it's basically more variables and that's what we all want in sport isn't it It's a little bit like setting up a, a golf course for a major event. You try and make it as difficult as possible to identify the best. It doesn't always work like that because over the years there have been some very surprising winners of major golf tournaments, but that's the intention. Well, he's done well there because that only could have gone in off that jaw. And now if he pots this long pink four... 
He has a combination purple five onto the nine for his second rack of this match. Fair to classify this call as not a certainty, but one he should make. Yeah, I think because there's a bit of an angle, you do see these miss now and again, but, you know, at this level, you've got to be potting this nine ball. He does. And so Ivan Perez wins his second rack. Drago had a chance there to pile on the pressure, but when he missed, Perez did the rest. I can tell you over on table two, Veronica Ivanovskaya now leads 2-0 against Tiberiu Iogulescu. My colleague Michael McMullen will be very interested to know that he's won a silver medal at the World Maths Championship. That's the kind of nugget of information, like me, he will store away for future use. Actually, Michael's looking at me with a very puzzled expression. I don't think he can quite believe what I just said. It's true, Michael. Silver medal, World Maths Championship. Here, though, he's in a, a minus situation. 2-0 down to Ivanovskaya as we go back to, to table one to see whether Perez can further trim the deficit. Drago with the push. Can't see this one ball. Just rolls into the, the green six. One of Perez's fellow countrymen, Jose Alberto Delgado, going brilliantly against Patrick Mossel. He leads 6-0. Could be the first player to record a victory here this morning. One of the notable mention, Niels Fyan, one of the giants of the game. He's fallen up on Harold Stalker. That will work out very handy indeed for Tony. Maybe seeing the jump cube pulled out again in a minute. <coughs> Could kick it off the bottom rail and even pot the one in the side pocket. what he's looking at now if he does go this way if he doesn't pot it you would think he's going to leave Tony a shot well this is the route he's going he's trying to pop this one in the right centre What a nice shot that is. Again, Karam. Hit that ball absolutely perfect, didn't he? And he's not out of the woods just yet because I don't think he can pot this too. But at least he's still at the table. He's in a better position than he was just a few seconds ago. 
Good chance of a safety here. Can bump the two ball, two rails. Down on this bottom rail behind the nine. And just get the cue ball over towards the, the red three and the seven. It's looking increasingly good for Ivanovskaya on table two. She's now 3-0 up. Just spotted a lovely eight ball. Came round off three angles to be on the nine. And just one last reminder. I know it's repetitive, but worth telling you that you can see all of the table to action all day, every day, on the Matrim Pool YouTube channel. Well, breaking news, Tony Drago has brought a jump cue. This is something you don't see often. And I think that's why he's missed the two. Oh, the pink four just rolling there has changed this rack dramatically. That's going to make things a lot harder now. It's clearly in the, the DNA of former snooker players that the one horrible area of nine ball is the jump shot. All of the former snooker players who've done well in this game, and it's been one of their, their weaknesses. It was definitely the case for Steve Davis, who potted the winning nine ball at the Moscone Cup, didn't he? Here's confirmation on table two that things have begun very well indeed for Veronica Ivanovskaya. Oh, not well though for Perez there. What a horrible sound that shot made. Yeah, he had ball in hand there. He was trying to draw into the pink four to move the four away from that rail. Unfortunately, he's jumped it over the two, and now well, we're going to see Tony play the very same shot that Ivan tried. Drawing the cue ball into the four. Hopefully hits it half ball and just bumped it towards the centre of the table. Just like so. Good shot. You might have noticed on Teddy Drago's back is the the letters Taum, which represents the, the new chalk that is, according to the vast majority of the players on the snooker tour, revolutionised that game. There it is, you see. He actually caught that particular shot too sweetly. Overscrewed considerably. Mm, yeah, that was thin. That really was thin. And in the end, the kiss he got on the four, that was quite fortunate. Yeah, it's just turned into a bit of a scrappy match now, hasn't it, for both players? I mean, Drago got off to a flying start. It looked like it was going to be a quick win, and now he's going through the mind games. I've never seen anyone, and I think you'll be able to tell me whether this applies to pool or not. Certainly in snooker, I've never seen anyone who has got a greater difference between his very best and his very worst than Drago. He can be on the top of the mountain or in the deepest valley. Yeah, maybe that's what we're about to witness now because Ivan can play a good safety here. And he has done very good safety indeed. This is going to be a tough hit. 
maybe he can just get inside that brown seven and find that little bit of cushion or rail. Got to hit a rail after contact. So after this ball contacts the four, oh, I think the cue ball just hit a rail. I think that's okay. Yeah, they were both keeping a very close eye on that, weren't they? We had an incident like that, didn't we, at the UK Open with Shane Van Boning? Well, yeah, there's a bit of an experience there, though, from Ivan, because we have, like, a floating referee doing both table one and two, and a lot of players would have just said, Tony, hold fire, let me get the referee to watch this one, buddy. But it was a good hit, and that's another good safety. Ivan's showing Tony he's here to play. He's not just going to roll over. Tony's just telling Ivan this ball is off the rail. Oh, good shot. Very good shot. Update from table two, Veronica Ivanovskaya is just about breaking off in rack five, leading to Biru Iorgulescu, 4-0. Also going great guns, Jonas Suto Camino, the Spanish prospect, 6-0 up now on Klaus Dieter Klein. Another 6-0 leader from Switzerland, Michael Schneider. 6-0 up on Yalo. Kotanermi from Finland. Just lacked a little bit of pace. It was a good effort, good vision. But now this is a wonderful chance for Tony to win this scrappy rack. Been a bit fortunate a couple of times, it has to be said. But he has come out of a couple of good hooks to stay in this rack and you would think he's going to win rack number seven. Yeah, always been associated with fireworks and attacking play Drago for obvious reasons but tactically when required he's quite astute one thing is a given call when it comes to potting few are any better and so Tony Drago Finds himself 5-2 ahead in this race to nine. More than halfway to clearing his first hurdle here in the wonderful city or town, I should say, of Fulda, which is about an hour's train drive from Frankfurt. Some of the Baroque architecture here is a delight. Very laid-back atmosphere in the, the town centre. Many nice eateries. And, of course, the weather complements everything. It's been simply perfect this week. I think today the forecast is something like 32 degrees centigrade, which is around 90 Fahrenheit. Fulda is also, in pool terms, famous as the, the birthplace and where he was raised also of Torsten Homan, twice world nine-ball champion. Had a brief chat with Torsten yesterday and he was saying how delighted he is to be back home and to see the world's best pool players also in his hometown. Yeah, unfortunately, it all got the better of Thorsten in his opening first round match, but he's still there fighting and I'm sure he will be good for the last 64.
It's another dry break. And he can play a push out. I know he's desperate to play this shot. He feels like he's spotted something, but I'm not so sure. Well, he's playing the shot, so he feels like he's spotted something. Maybe he's trying to bank it just past that five on the left. Yeah, draw the cue ball over towards the eight, and that's going to work out okay. Pretty decent shot. Tony was just trying to bide a bit of time there. Kicking two rails to hit this one ball. It's a pretty big ball. He's not going to be sure where it's going to end up. And he's made a good contact. And I think overall he's going to be happy with the outcome there. Whenever you leave distance, that's all you can ask for. Even's got a nice safety shot option here. He can bank the one ball back up top table. And try and get this cute ball over in behind the four. Just a, a little bit heavy on pace. So we're three or four safety shots in now in this rack. Who is going to falter first? As I was saying before, the winner of this match takes on Sanyan Perlovanovic or Alan Brown in the winner's first round. Well, against the expectations of many, Perlovanovic is behind. He was 2-0 up. Now he trails 3-2. Oh, the nine ball was caught there first. Foul committed, ball in hand. And look at this table. Not recommended to give a table like this up to Tony Drago.
can tell you, Veronica Ivanovskaya remains with a clean sheet. She's 5-0 up on Tiberiu Yorgo from Romania. 5-0. Tony's just got to be careful here. He's made a few mistakes the last couple of racks. He's got to keep things tight because this is a big rack in the match now. Ivan's no, he's no slouch. He's shown he can play. He's very tactically astute as well. I don't believe he was playing for this pocket, but it's worked out very nice indeed. And what a heartwarming story it would be if Drago had a a good run here. For a while, he was having quite serious health issues. We were all really concerned about him. Thankfully, though, they are in the, the rear view mirror. And he's got his old exuberance back, dashing around the table, knocking in balls, as though it was the easiest thing in the world. And the point is, for him, that is the easiest thing in the world. In his pomp on the snooker tour, when he was on, other players used to go and watch him play. That's how entertaining he was. Mind you, he's being outpaced today by a couple of players. Konrad Jezusin from Poland, 8-2 up on the hill. Also there, Tyler Steyer. A good run here would do wonders for his Moscone Cup credentials. Marco Dorenberg from Germany. Taking on fellow countryman Rainer Biermann. 6 0 for Dorenberg. And Riku Rompainen, the youngster from Finland, who he saw perform with such great distinction at the, the UK Open, 5 1 up. And Mika Immonen finds himself on the hill also. Another dry break. Not quite finding that one ball in the side pocket. We kind of predicted this at the start of the match as well. We felt like this would be Tony's weakness. And we've seen it again, the one ball's up on that top rail. Time and time again. Some big hitters coming up shortly around this arena. The likes of Francisco Sanchez Ruiz coming off his victory on Monday in the Petrish Open in Bulgaria on the Euro Tour. Also involved a little later today, Alexander Kazakis, last year's World Pool Masters champion. Yeah, the way this first round has been set up by match rumours. We've seen a section of the draw played yesterday, so players have played two matches. So we haven't seen SVB, Joshua Filler, Albin Ocean just yet on day one, but they will play their section of the draw today. Drago fires the bank in. Seven ball's going to be awkward. You can see it doesn't go past the eight, so he's got things to think about there. Well, he's just taken a look to see whether the, the five will pass the six. He must have looked before he even took on the previous shot. Oh, what a big shot this is. Tony Drago. Yeah, it's a highlight reel shot there from Drago. Just to break them balls out and give himself a look. Needs this cue ball to slow down. I don't think it's going to. He was trying to play for the seven down in this long rail. He doesn't mess about, does he, Phil? Straight down. 
Oh, it's another good shot. This is turning out to be a beauty. He's back, folks. The tornado. What do they call one of those most extreme tornadoes? I think it's an F5, isn't it? Well, I don't think he's quite up to F5 standards today, but he's playing very nicely. Brilliant stuff in that particular rack. Drago now in total command here, seven to up. Now, just a reminder of what's going to be on table one next. It's Albin Auschen against Sandor Kont. That's our second match. And then one that everyone is really looking forward to, given our location here. It is Joshua Fuller up against GJ Oyan Goran from Great Britain. Actually, officially down as Gary, but he wants to be known as GJ. On table two, Veronica Ivanovskaya in total command at the moment. Eklan Kachi's up next against Matthew Wrigley. And then Shane Van Boning will take on Martin Breuer. You always look forward, don't you, Carl, to when... Shane Van Boning makes his entrance. Yeah, SVB, Joshua Feller, they have this aura, you know, all sports do, and they're the ones that carry it in the, in the sport of nine ball. Joshua Feller, without doubt, the best pool player in the world right now. He has won so many big events this year. So basically, this is the, the first round. The, the first round of matches was played over two days. We had half of it yesterday, and we've got half of it again here. Of course, we will have further rounds a little later on, like the, the first round in the loser's side, the, the first round on the winner's side as well. But right now, these are first round matches. Yeah, and if you're a little unsure about the sort of format, we started with 256 players and we're playing a double elimination format. So you get one life, so effectively you can lose. And we're playing for 64 spots. As soon as 64 players are determined, that is then single elimination. So you've basically got to win three matches in a row in the winner's section to qualify. Yes, and the intention of all of the players starting out today is that they want to win two matches out of two and come unscathed out of the day. That's the, the ideal scenario. Yeah, if you can win your first two matches in the winner's section, you're in a real good spot because that means you go into winner's qualification round. And if you do happen to lose that match, you then go into the loser's qualification round. So basically you get two bites at the cherry to qualify for the last 64. It's such a great place to be. This is not a great place to be though. Jacked up over the six, trying to pop this purple five. This is horrible. In the match he played on our featured table yesterday, Viktor Zielinski from Poland knocked in a couple of really good lung-range pots with really awkward hampered queuing. And then, very surprisingly, in the winner's round one, he lost out to a youngster from New Zealand, Sullivan Clark, 9-2. Quite a few shocks yesterday, and that was right up there for me amongst the most unlikely. Always going to be awkward. Always going to be awkward, that shot. When you're jacked up and you've got to get the cue ball moving, you see them shots miss time and time again. And Drago's been gifted five balls to get on the hill. I think in the end, Phil, we felt like this was going to look like it was going to be the scoreline, but it started to get a little bit messy in the middle of the match. But in the end, I think Drago's showing his class. is still there. Absolutely, I think he's done enough, hasn't he, to indicate that he could still be a factor. 
Yeah, I mean, we, we can't get too giddy. I mean, we've got to see what he's like against the top boys, you know. But he's showing signs that he's a, he's a danger. He's a threat, without a doubt. Everyone assumes in Q Sports that when someone dictates the pace of a match, it's because they are the slower of the two and they reduce the pace of the other player. But I think with Drago, he gets players to, to play a little more speedily than normal and he dictates the pace that way. Anyway, he's on the hill at 8-2. A couple of results for you already. So sure, has beaten Daniel Tietze from Germany. 9-1. 9-1 the scoreline also for Jose Alberto Delgado over Patrick Mossel. They're both first round matches. The winner of this will play Alan Brown or Sanyan Perlovanovic. The score there, 4-3 to Brown. <coughs> and I can tell you quickly, Tyler Steyer has won 9-1 against Daniel Stewart's. change the side of the table up but again it's a dry break this is not going to bode well for mr drago moving forward phil we can talk about maybe he's going to be a threat but if he doesn't figure this break out it's going to be an early bath i'm afraid at some point well i used a golf analogy earlier and i'll use another one here now you can be the best putter in the world, the best chipper, the best bunker player, whatever. If you don't hit the ball a lengthy distance, you are so greatly disadvantaged. And I think that's the same kind of scenario. If you don't break well at this game, yes, you can compensate occasionally, but eventually you're going to get caught out. Well, this is a prime example of what I was speaking about for the UK Open. You know, when we had um, Martin Gold and Gary Wilson playing in that event, they, they would have been a little bit dangerous because the break was too easy. The wing ball was guaranteed. You could have potted the wing ball off the break, Phil. This is how easy it was. But, you know, if you if you put snooker players in this tournament now with this break, they're in a world of trouble. Another result for you, Conrad. Jezushin from Poland, fine player. He beat Doi He Din from Vietnam, 9-2. But I suppose the other way to look at it, even though Drago's not potting a ball in this particular match, it's been okay because no disrespect to Ivan Nunes Perez, but he's not one of the top, top players, is he, on the, on the circuit? So he's, Tony knows he's going to get shots He's going to get back to the table, isn't he? He's back to the table again. But when he comes up against someone who's obviously very good in the safety department, that's where he's going to struggle. I think this event is going to be good for someone like Albin Ocean. He's up next, so that's going to be interesting to watch him because tactically he's one of the best to do it. Over on table two, can Jorga Ulescu finally get a rack on the board? He missed a nine ball in the fifth he should have potted. It's 6-0 to Ivanovskaya. He should dish here, but he has missed a few. It looks as though the dreaded whitewash is going to be averted. Jorg Ulescu from Romania gets his first rack on the board. Oh, and the cue ball there is on the carpet. And we've got a 1-9 combo dead set for the match. Just look where the nine ball is sat. And this rack was always going to be about the two ball, the blue two, because it was awkward, but... Just the way these balls have set up, this match should be over. Drago wins his opening match at the European Open. 1-9 combo. 
There it is. Apart from the